can confirm you are now live. Okay, thank you. And uh, so I will call this uh, meeting of the Heritage Advisory Committee to order. Um, and I'll begin by uh, stating that the Halifax Regional Municipality is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq people. The municipality acknowledges the peace and friendship treaties signed in this territory and recognizes that we are all treaty people. Uh, so thank you everyone for uh, attending this special meeting. Uh, I believe we have quorum. So our first order of business um, is to approve the order of business. And uh, it's, I noticed we had a few emails. Uh, Jill, do we have any uh, anything that we're not aware of yet? Uh, no, there's nothing to be added or deleted and no deferrals. Um, there was correspondence received yep. and it was uh, all of it was circulated to members. Okay, yeah, I received uh, four items of correspondence. I, I believe I got an email about a video as well. That, uh, uh, I'll, move the, I'll, I'll move the approval of the order of business uh, circulated. All right, okay. I get a seconder for that. Second, I, I own it. Yeah, for starter, thank you. Uh, are there any conflicts of interest in uh, relation to this particular item today? Let's approve the agenda first. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. Those in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 And that's aye. unanimous. Uh, all right. Now we can move along. Uh, item number three. Uh, are there any conflicts of interest in relation to this particular property? Oh, Jennifer, Jen you're uh, muted, I believe. Thank you. Jennifer um, Hines. Um, I am in conflict of interest. I am employed by Dalhousie University. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for letting us know. Any other conflicts that need to be declared? No? All right. That's good. So I guess we can move straight on to uh, item four, and that's case number H00539, which is a request to include 1245 Edward Street in Halifax in the registry of heritage property for the Halifax Regional Municipality. Um, and I believe this, is, uh, this has been in the media a great deal recently. There's a lot of interest, but uh, I think we have a staff report on this that was turned around very quickly. And uh, I will turn this over to uh, city staff and uh, they will tell us about 1245 Edward Street. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my, name is, uh, my name is Seamus McGrail. I'm a senior heritage planner with the Heritage Property Program. HRM Planning and Development. I will uh, share my presentation with the committee now. Um, Mr. Chair, is the presentation uh, visible to you? I can see it, yes. Okay, terrific. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Um, this is a, an application that is before you. It's a request to include a property in the registry of, of, uh, of uh, the, the heritage registry of the Halifax Regional Municipality. And the property in question here is 1245 Edward Street in Halifax. So the property itself is located on Edward Street. Um, the application was made by Peg and Shimon Walt on behalf of a group of local residents who are concerned with the uh, uh, activity on this property. Uh, the subject property is located on the east side of Edward Street in the middle of the block between University Avenue and South Street near the southern limit of Edward Street. The property contains a two and a half story dwelling, which was constructed in 1897. The property is surrounded by other residential properties of a similar use and character, as well as larger institutional um, uses, including Dalhousie University and the IWK Health Center. So as you can see on this map here, the subject property is identified in uh, with a red outline and, and, uh, and the surrounding, surrounding properties you can see are largely of a similar character, but there are some larger um, uses uh, to the north and to the east, especially. And I should mention that this is a third party heritage registration application. That means that the applicant is not the owner of the property. The owner, the owner is uh, Dalhousie University. Dalhousie University has applied and uh, been issued a demolition permit for this building. 
but they have not uh, not yet uh, demolished the exterior of the building. So the, the committee will be, uh, I'm sure you, you know the drill by now, the, the committee will be um, looking at six different criteria, um, part of the HRM Heritage Building Registration Evaluation. And uh, we'll now go through each of these uh, criteria one by one, and the committee can, um, can score each one as we make progress, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chair and, and the committee. Yep, that sounds good. Thank you. So in terms of the age of the building, um, this one is quite straightforward as usual uh, with, with heritage registrations. The heritage building was constructed between 1897 and 1898. Uh, the city directories show no home existing in 1896, but a, a pair of home existing and, and unoccupied by 1897. And the directories do show this home as occupied by William McCullough Boak in 1898. So staff recommend a score of between uh, of 13 uh, because this building was constructed between 1868 and 1898, 1899, sorry. Over to you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, sure, we'll pause here and uh, talk about the date if necessary. It's a very specific number, uh, 13, and that corresponds with a very specific uh, date of building, which we know exactly. So uh, I guess there would be, is there a consensus on 13? I support 13. I'm sorry? Affirmative. Yeah. Yes, David. Okay. All right, let's move along then. Give it a 13. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moving along to the second criteria, which is um, historical importance. So the building, um, it uh, has historical associations with uh, prominent families of the late 19th and 20th centuries, namely the Boak family and the Hobrecker family. The lot itself has an association with Edward Shields. He was the uh, superintendent of the Halifax uh, Poor's Asylum and whose executors were responsible for the subdivision of the property um, in, in its immediate surroundings shortly after uh, um, Mr. Shields' uh, death. William McCullough Boak uh, was one of the numerous merchants in the prominent Boak family of Halifax. Boak ran a commission merchants in a wholesale grocery out of a building on the western side of Lower Water Street near Salter Street. He purchased lots from uh, the Edward Shields subdivision in 1897 and commissioned the construction of this house uh, that same year. He became its first inhabitant in 1898 and resided there with his wife and son until 1903 when they sold the property at that time to an accountant named James Frederick Berry. Uh, Rudolf Hobrecker purchased uh, this property in uh, 1912. Um, there's a picture here. You can see my cursor. This is uh, Rudolf Hobrecker. Uh, seated to the left side of his father, Alexander Hobrecker, and his mother, uh, Charlotte. Um, and here's a picture of uh, Rudolf uh, Hobrecker in the 1930s with his, uh, likely his uh, children and grandchildren. So Rudolf was the eldest son of the, a prominent and wealthy German immigrant couple, Alexander Hobrecker and his wife, Charlotte. Uh, the elder Hobrecker owned and operated a Hobrecker wholesale tobacconists out of the Prince of Wales building in Granville Mall, which is still standing today. Uh, the, Ho the Hobrecker family lived in this, in this particular building for a total of 45 years. Together with a group of uh, Halifax investors, Alexander Hobrecker, that's the, uh, the father, uh, he established the uh, Brad Door Marble Company which in 1885 purchased Marble Mountain in Cape Breton. It's from this quarry that Holbrecker sourced the white marble for the construction of the Alexander Holbrecker Mansion, now known as the Oland Mansion on Young Avenue. Rudolf Holbrecker worked uh, for his father at the Granville Street Tobacconist Shop and would later strike out on his own working as a commission merchant and eventually managing uh, Kelly's Limited, a leather goods company. Rudolf and his wife, Elizabeth, or Bessie, uh, raised two boys and two girls at his house and eventually sold the property in 1957. So 
the staff are recommending that this, uh, this property is intimately related uh, with a prominent local family and recommend a score of between 11 and 15 points. Uh, over to you, Mr. Chair. All right, um, several um, prominent local families, I would say. Uh, so a score of between 11 and 15 uh, seems appropriate. Can we narrow that down at all? Um, do I hear any suggestions from the audience? I may I suggest a 13, Mr. Chairman. 13, yeah. That's sort of right in the middle. Anyone uh, have any other thoughts? Higher or lower? You know, I would argue for a 14. I think the, the Boak family was, was huge in 19th century Halifax. Um, I'm less familiar with the Hobecker family, but uh, obviously a very significant family. And uh, I don't know, I think, uh, I think a 14. Yeah, I would agree um, a little bit higher um, because it is a pr um, prominent <laughs> family of Halifax. And, uh, you know, the family grew up there. Um, for many years, they seem to have established themselves. So I think it is of historical importance. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely go with, uh, you said 14, I believe? I said 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh, 14 or 15. 13. Sorry? 14, okay. sorry. 14, 14 or 15. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or 15. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else want to uh, speak up on this? Uh, I'd, I'd like to weigh in uh, just to play the devil's advocate here. Yeah. Uh, what makes the Boak family especially significant, other than the fact that they were super wealthy? Uh, well, that in itself often makes someone significant. Uh, but why? Uh, I, I know the um, the second generation I know occupied uh, his shop was in uh, the Prince, <coughs> Prince George building. It called, but uh, it still still exists on Granville Street, and it's a gorgeous building, very prominent. Um, I just know that they were prominent because I see their name all the time when I'm doing research. That's uh, yes. the extent of, of uh, my knowledge. I, and I, I, there are a lot of, of names like that in and around Halifax, I realize. I guess, particularly for myself as a historian, I don't see any particular contributions they've made to the province or the city other than mm -hmm. perhaps becoming wealthy, which I question whether that is enough to make someone significant. Yes. So. Personally, my vote would go a little bit lower, perhaps towards the 12 or the 13 range. Yeah. Okay. Well, I respect excellent this. points. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, so oh, did we... Sorry, that, that was, I had nothing else on my soapbox, so I was just stepping back there. Okay, well, we've, we've heard calls for a 14 and uh, also lower, so perhaps uh, we can settle on a 13, which I believe David initially <laughs> suggested. I, I would uh, support a 13 as well. Okay, let's uh, let's call it a 13 then. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Seamus. Okay, uh, moving on to the next uh, cri criterion, significance of architect or builder. Um, our, our heritage research uh, team was unable to ascertain who the architect or builder was for this property um, and for the design or the construction of 1245 Edward Street. Uh, what, what I would suggest is a score of one, uh, since we don't know the, uh, the architect or builder rather than zero. Uh, we know that someone built and someone designed the building. So um, if you're using a, a binary approach here, uh, I would suggest a one rather than a zero for a score here. Uh, that's something that I could support as well. I don't like giving a zero. Um, and although we don't know the actual architect, we do know that it was commissioned uh, by Boak and uh, he, certainly, he certainly expressed his own vision to the architect. So uh, we can assume what showed up uh, at 1245 Edward Street was what he had in mind. So I'm okay with the one. Anyone else? Uh... I'm, I'm okay with that too. Okay, then we'll go I... with the one. Oh, yes. Leslie, go ahead. I was just conferring, yep. I yeah. Agree. All right. Okay. So one it is. Back thank you. you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. In terms of uh, construction uh, type, uh, the dwelling is a two and a half story uh, building of light frame balloon construction with a roughly rectangular plan. It is built atop a masonry foundation of coursed rubble and stretcher bond brick. 
The brick portions of the foundation are prim primarily surrounding the basement windows. The outside walls are clad in a combination of wooden shingles and clapboard, and the roof is clad in asphalt shingles. Uh, so staff are recommending a score of uh, four and six points for a uh, moderately rare or, um, or early example of uh, construction technology. Mr. Chair? Yeah, okay, uh, four to six is our range. Uh, do I hear anything? A four or a five or a six? Uh, yes, I'm happy to split the difference, go down the middle and pick five. Uh, that it's famous sense. in regards to the uh, foundation work. Uh, from the pictures I've seen, it seems like there's like different pieces. You know, some of it's natural rock, some of it's boulders, some of it's infill. It's kind of is, is there a consistency to it, or does it seem like there's been some repair or adjustments or additions done to the house? And you know, I'm just trying to look at the construction type. I would say uh, through uh, Mr. Chair to uh, the, the committee, I would say that this uh, there was some uh, adjustments made to the foundation. Even in this photo, you can see the corner being uh, largely a brick, uh, infilling some of the the coarse rubble foundation. Uh, there's there's certainly been some uh, some work done to the foundation over the years. I think there's some other photos here of the foundation as we move through. Um, maybe not. But uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely respond the, the latter. And has the uh, house seen any attachment or addition done to it? I'm trying to look at the roof line and stuff and see if it's, it's uh, one picture I saw there looked like the, the siding was different or I wasn't sure if it was a, a siding was repaired in one spot or was there just an addition done to the house? And was that uh, built the same type of construction uh, methodology? I think, uh, thanks for the question. I'm, uh, through Mr. Chair, I think we can uh, discuss those those uh, issues when we arrive at the um, integrity criteria. Okay, no. So does anyone care to suggest a score for this particular category? And yeah, the condition will definitely come up in a, in a future category. Start at a five, split yeah. the difference like you said. <laughs> Everyone good with a five? All right, I think we're going to go for a five. I'd support that, David. Thank you. All right, Seamus, on to the next. Thank you. Uh, so moving on to the next criterion, which is architectural style. So this uh, residential building, it exhibits a mix of styles consistent with the uh, transitional period between uh, the stylistic periods known as the Second Empire and uh, Queen Anne Revival. The second empire style is defined by the, uh, the mansard roof and uh, the, uh, the classical ornamentation, such as the, uh, the dentils under the, uh, under the roof. Uh, the Queen Anne style is defined by the asymmetrical form along the facade with the, uh, the corner tower, irregular roof lines, overhanging eaves, uh, corner turret, unusual windows and, uh, and the, the front veranda as well. Uh, some character defining elements of the building include its two and a half story um, height, um, unusual mansard roof, octagonal roof turret interrupted by a front facing gable with a sunburst motif, single gable dormer with round headed single pane windows, bracketed cornice, um, canted two bay, two-story bay window um, and a, sort of a combination of rectangular and round headed Southern windows, uh, cedar shingles, uh, front veranda with the decorative turned posts with, with capitals um, and the coarse uh, rubble foundation as well. So in terms of style, uh, staff recommend uh, a score of between seven and 10 points for a very rare early example of a, a transition building, a transition of two styles. Mr. Chair. Okay. Does anyone care to suggest a score in this uh, category? A great number of uh, character defining elements to this particular house. I, I'd give it a, a, an eight or a nine. I, I thought it was quite eclectic to see there's so many different pieces in there, mm -hmm. you know, from, from the, from the, 
pinnacle of the roof to the cornices to the gable ends of the wood. I thought it was quite quite an eclectic kind of collection of, of architectural styles there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so an eight or a nine. Uh, I agree. I um, I was also impressed by the write up in the report uh, about how it's a transitional between uh, two different styles and fairly rare for that reason. So I would also support a fairly high score. Mr. Chair, I would support a nine. It is, I think, very rare. It's a high point in the transition of that neighborhood. The other homes, and I'm familiar with the streetscape, the other homes are all of the same vintage, perhaps slightly newer, mm -hmm. uh, but this one is a high point in the transition and it has many items aspects of architectural merit, so a nine. Yeah, it really is a jewel on the street. Uh, so we have a consensus for a nine so far. Anyone else care to uh, join in? Oh, I, I did. I definitely support a nine. Nine, okay, David, thank you. All right, nine sounds good then. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Chair. I just uh, moving on to the uh, fifth, uh, criterion, which is uh, architectural integrity. So the building exhibits a, a high level of architectural integrity. And, and when we're speaking about integrity, we're referring to the degree of change from the original design of the building, the original details of the building rather than condition. Um, so the building exhibits a high level of arch architectural integrity with respect to its layout and additions. The house retains its modified rectangular plan with minimal changes. It exhibits a moderately high level of architectural integrity with respect uh, to condition. So staff recommend uh, that the, this building is largely unchanged in a score of between 11 and 15 points. All right, thanks, Janice. Um, yeah, I was surprised uh, compared to what we usually look at. This house uh, is almost identical to its footprint in the 19th century. Um, it needs a paint job, but uh, between 11 and 15, uh, does anyone want to uh, throw out a number to give us a sense of where we stand? Well, I'd give it at least a 13. In regards to the back porch, is that a later addition? It looks like I'm trying to figure from the bottom right hand corner of that picture the change of the roof line. Uh, I'm just trying to figure what that's. This um, this uh, porch here. Yes. Yeah. So if I go back to this photo, we we know that it was standing in 1930s here. Um, you can see it here in this photograph. Um, so we Is know the porch. Oh, that's the porch itself. Okay. That, that that's the rear porch there. Yeah. So okay. we know. This photograph from the 1930s shows it. I'm not sure if it was original to the building, but we know it was standing in, in the 1930s. Uh, so it's definitely a historic piece of the building. Yeah, I, I thought I saw the outline of it on one of the maps as well. Yeah, I, I think you're right there, Patrick. Um, I think you can see what, what I believe is that addition um, in the, the revised 1911 version of the 1895 insurance map. Um, and it appears that that, that that addition to the rear L is, is existing then. So if it was a 1911, if it appears in 1911, it's a year before the Holbrecker family purchased the building. So it was likely added by uh, uh, Boak, the original owner. So it was likely an original piece of the building or, or an addition made by the original owner. Yeah, very early on in any case. So. I would personally support a 14. I don't know if that's going too overboard. I, I think I could support a, a, a 14 there. Uh, this is Luke. Um, yeah, I think there's a, the real kind of exceptional degree of, of architectural integrity in this property. I, I, I believe we did receive some correspondence um, that you know, suggested that there was you know, a deteriorated condition in the interior of the building, but the building has been unoccupied for several years. But in terms of its overall form and the particular character defining elements that are within our purview here, they are, you know, exceptionally intact. And so I think a 14 is uh, as a strong case for that. Hi, else? It's Iona. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say it's Iona. I would support a 14 as well. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it has some rough spots, but it's a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, 14. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, 14, then. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. And moving on now to the last uh, criterion, which is uh, relationship to surrounding area. So 1245 Edward Street bears a strong relationship to the surrounding neighborhood through the neighborhood's very consistent two to three story scale and primarily residential typology. The only exception is the uh, abutting Glengarry Apartments, which does respect the three story form of the older buildings on the street. Uh, these apartments occupy the former large side yard of 1245 Edward Street, which were sold along with the building in 1957. So as one of the older uh, buildings on the street, um, it is uh, considerably grander uh, in style. It's primarily Queen Anne revival style stands out among the uh, Victorian plain Halifax box style houses, but they're mostly flat roofs, two-story bay windows and varying levels of mass produced ornamentation from uh, local woodworking factories. And here, here you can see, um, uh, an aerial image of the building uh, circled in red. Uh, you see very much what, what appears to be an established uh, historic neighborhood, and it does stand out uh, as a, uh, an important architectural asset contributing to the heritage character of the surrounding area uh, and, and its immediate uh, streetscape. So staff recommend a score of between six and 10 points. Mr. Chair. Yep. Uh, okay. So recommendation for six to 10 points. Uh, any feedback on this from committee? Mr. Chair, uh, it's Lois speaking. Lois? Yeah. I'd like to suggest a nine, something that has been overlooked, but shows in this aerial photograph. Uh, it is integral to the neighborhood. The Morris Street Fire Hall, it's just a stone's throw away. And beyond that is the building that's symbolic of Dalhousie's foundation in that part of the city, the old forest campus, 1887, I believe. The house that we're considering today is really a prime lead example of neighborhood transition. In this case, it's new urbanization. It's the rising middle class leaving downtown and coming uptown early 20th century. I think it's a prime example of it, more so than, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, more so than the other homes in the neighborhood, which are all of the same vintage, but this is a cut above. So I would suggest a nine. Yeah, Lois, I had a lot of the same thoughts that you just expressed. Um, when I look at this house and the neighbors, this is the, the grandest house, the largest house, um, yeah. and, and the first house built. So it, it acted as, as an anchor for that street and attracted others who followed. Um, and I think also being the largest and grandest house next to um, a collection of smaller salt boxes, if this house gets demolished, it's going to very much diminish the street and, and maybe even put the rest of the houses at risk. So I would also support uh, a high score of nine or perhaps even higher. I'll, I'll wait to hear what others have to say first. Uh, I think this is uh, Luke speaking. I think I'd take you up on that, uh, Patrick. I, I agree, certainly agree with your characterization of this as, as an anchor on the street and with Lois's uh, description of this as being um, something integral to the, the character of the street. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really is a quite a fine example of, you know, the, the architectural styles exhibited in the property. Um, it's certainly intimately related to the surrounding area. Um, for that reason, I mean, I would propose that, that this would be a 10. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it very much is a neighborhood there. Uh, so a 10. Uh, anyone else? Sort of I, I was going to say an eight, but I'll satisfy with a nine. I, 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 I think 10, and I can't say a 10. Much? Like, a little too much. I'd like to see more of the streetscape and stuff and how it all, all very, very similar and stuff, but uh, just. I don't get that. I don't get that feel from the it looks like okay. the other houses on the street kind of been modified over the years and stuff. But so, yeah, a lot of them certainly have. Okay, well, I, I would be happy with a nine. Uh, I support Lawrence's recommendation of a nine. 
Sounds like that. Lois has made a very good argument and really carefully thought that through. So I would support her recommendation of a nine as well. Yeah, thanks, Leslie. Um, okay, it sounds like we're good with a nine then. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Nine. Sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, moving on now to the uh, staff recommendation. Um, if this property has scored more than 50 points, and I will defer to, uh, to uh, the committee for uh, that scoring. Um, the recommendation is to set a date for a, a hearing to consider the inclusion of the property in the registry of uh, heritage property and to ultimately approve the request for the registration. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes the staff presentation. All right, thank you very much, Seamus. And thank you for getting this to us so fast. This is uh, not an ordinary meeting, so that's uh, much appreciated. Uh, so do we know what uh, the whole score is yet? I believe the score is 64, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll, we'll go, that, go with that. Uh, so it's certainly reached the threshold of 50. But so, uh, can, the, can, the, can the clerk uh, verify that? Can Sharon, I think Sharon was tracking it along. She was. Yes, it, it, I can confirm the total was 64. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in, in regards to the correspondence that we received, I think we should make a special acknowledgement of the one from uh, McGinnis Cooper, the legal counsel for Dalhousie University. Uh, in that letter, it also refers to a video link. I had the opportunity to watch that nine minute video. Most of it's about the interior of the building, but some of it's on the exterior. So if you have a chance to review it, um, it's uh, it's kind of eye opening what would the, 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 the style inside the house, but uh, I'm afraid that what we saw in the video may not be always there now because of our understanding of some abatement processes going on and some of the ordinate uh, woodwork may have been removed and stuff. And there appears to be some uh, structural damage because of, of a burst pipe and some water damage. So it's, it's disappointing to see that stuff in the video, but uh, I just want to make sure that people are aware of that letter from, from uh, legal counsel, the external legal counsel for uh, Dalhousie University, as well as a number of correspondence we received uh, from neighbors and supporters of the heritage in the area. So I want to make sure we acknowledge all those uh, correspondence that were received. And the petition that we received last meeting, we should also acknowledge. All right, so if uh, everyone hasn't done so, uh, that video was sent to us uh, at 12.30. I haven't looked at it yet, but uh, we absolutely all should. Uh, so if we could move along now to, um, uh, to the motion. Can I uh, get someone to, uh, to read the motion? A volunteer, to put the motion on the floor. Go ahead, I can read the motion. All right, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> Uh, I move that the Heritage Advisory Committee recommend that Halifax Regional Council set a date for a heritage hearing to consider the inclusion of the subject property in the Registry of Heritage Property for the Halifax Regional Municipality, and two, approve the request to include 1245 Edward Street, Halifax, in the Registry of Heritage Property for the Halifax Regional Municipality, as shown on Map 1 of the staff report, dated June 24, 2022, as a Municipal Heritage Property under the Heritage Property Act. All right, thank you, David. Uh, second. So motion. Second is Councillor Stoddard? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> so uh, all those in favour, uh, please say aye. 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 Uh, anyone opposed? No? All right, the motion is carried. Uh, and that, uh, that concludes our business. So uh, can I have a motion for adjournment? Uh, can I ask one question before we adjourn, Absolutely. please? Absolutely. Absolutely. So because it's, it's in the process of becoming a heritage property, does all action cease and, and desist or does it still... Is it still liable until it's actually registered or not? Uh, I might want to defer to uh, one of the city <laughs> staff on that so they can give you the exact details. Uh, I'll defer to my colleague, Aaron, for that question. Thank you, Seamus. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to the committee. Uh, thank you, Councillor, for the question. Um, so we've, uh, we've received some legal advice on this and we have uh, looked at the Heritage Property Act for some direction. As you know, Regional Council did pass a motion on Tuesday to preemptively ask uh, the municipal clerk, clerk to set a date for the heritage hearing once uh, it and if 
the committee were to uh, pass the building on evaluation. So now that that has taken place, the clerk will be uh, will be informed and they will set a date uh, for a council meeting at least 30 days from today. And a notice will be sent by registered mail to Dalhousie University once that uh, notice uh, has been received by Dalhousie. The building will be protected from demolition for 120 days or until it's officially registered by count. So between now and the time that they actually receive the letter, they can, they're still free to do as they intend or? That is correct. My understanding is that there is ongoing abatement processes on the property. Sure. And uh, as of yesterday, there were still some permits that had not been uh, received by Dalhousie. Uh, yeah. that they would likely need to start the process of actual demolition. Uh, so it is it is likely that the house will still be standing when they receive notice. Okay, great. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Sounds like a bit of good news. Uh, any other questions or thoughts before we wrap up? Lois, yes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to um, move a vote of thanks to the planning team for facilitating this meeting, Aaron and Seamus, for a very fine report that made it easy for us to understand the various aspects. So I'd like to tender a vote of thanks to the team. And if I could add, uh, absolutely. Uh, perhaps we could add uh, Jill McGillicuddy to that, our uh, legislative assistant. Yes, indeed. Uh, did all the legwork yes. together. <laughs> it's been a busy week. Yeah. And this pile in the background. All right, so much appreciated. Thank you. To all Thank of you. you. All right, so, um, and if uh, I should also add, if anyone is interested in talking to the media, uh, I, I'm not very, very excited about that, but uh, stick around and uh, Jennifer, uh, Jill will fill us in on that. Uh, so if I could get a motion to adjourn. I so move. Okay, thank you, Lois. Anyone uh, care to second that? Councillor Stoddard, thank you. And we do not have to take a vote on an adjournment. So I will uh, see you next time, which is uh, in about two weeks. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Good thank work, you. everyone. Happy Friday. <laughs>